more effective entry. All right. So what's up, everybody? Good to see you. What's up? I got to get coffee for everyone. Post-lunch, right? They get like this sugar thing going on. They get sedated. So uh, first of all, first of all, uh, let's see. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty here because, let's see, we should be full screen. We have to do this a third time. No. All right. Let's see. Is that it? Oh, look at that. Perfect. Thank you. I want to thank everybody and the whole 140 community. Why am I thanking you? The last time I was here, I came to talk about unlimited justice. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this campaign that we did, but Unlimited Justice was a campaign uh, where I used the platform on my brand to work to abolish corporal punishment, physical discipline, paddling of students in American schools. Uh, as of uh, March 1st, it was legal in 20 states. We managed to flip New Mexico. Uh, I'm very proud of that, 90 days. And the last time I saw you guys, I, reformed, I, I uh, informed you guys about uh, opportunities in legislating Texas and North Carolina. And to that extent, I want to give you an update. Uh, we managed to get two bills uh, written into law. They didn't completely abolish it, but uh, the states uh, and the map of corporal punishment is in fact changing in America. The amber states, Texas and uh, North Carolina, uh, we did have an impact, even though it was just a law that has parents checking a box, but we like the idea of them checking a box as not to whoop kids' asses in schools. So uh, it, now they need your permission. Okay, so hopefully parents will check that box. And uh, look, every bit counts, every bit of reform, and this, this reform business is messy bi uh, business, messy kitchen stuff. So I want to say thank you uh, to that extent because the 140 community at the last 140 conference really did pound uh, uh, Rick Perry's uh, Twitter account. So thank you for that. I want to talk to you about something very core uh, to me and I think is core issue in this issue of education reform. When you cut through the apple, you know, that's where the star is. That's where the, the seeds lie, right? That's where the growth is. And core to this whole effort around paddling was the notion of discipline. Discipline's a funny word, right? Especially the prefix uh, dis, right? You've heard the expression dissing, right? There's a, a great video I'm going to play for you right now that I, I just think is so elegant uh, in terms of capturing the spirit of dissing. With a very young pup, correcting problem behavior can be especially maddening. Can you turn the volume up? I probably tried all the tricks. Screaming myself hoarse, starving them, locking them in a closet for days on end, or just beating them without mercy. <laughs> but after my third arrest and court-ordered anger management counseling, I learned to channel my rage into an effective, non-violent puppy training tool. It's called dissing your dog. How to train your puppy with mockery and verbal humiliation. Let's just go with the Alpo, okay? I know it's not your first choice, but keep in mind, you're a f***ing dog. Okay, so, you see, the, there's something powerful about dissing, right? And there's something uh, important about the definition of discipline, right? Discipline, if you actually look up the definition, means the activity to exercise a regiment that develops or improves a skill or training. It has to do with education, right? Disciple, in fact, means pupil, right? So the way that we've kind of reimagined or through anthropology, I'm not uh, maybe educated enough to understand how we flipped the meaning of discipline uh, to mean something else. So obviously words matter, and I think more important than words mattering, the parts of those words matter, right? Does anyone know who Malcolm Knowles is? It's not Beyonce's father. Does anyone know? <laughs> okay, we see a hand back there. This guy, Malcolm Knowles. Malcolm Knowles really got the idea of words and the importance of words. You see, he's the godfather of this concept called andragogy, okay? And andragogy, if we think about the parts of the words for a moment, andro meaning man, right? Agog means to lead or cognate with. So you follow me here. This means to lead the man. Andragogy was all about self-directed learning, adult education. This guy was like the godfather of it. He wrote all these really fascinating books. To that extent, I carry around a PDF that I'm going to make available to you guys 
where it compares, an educator wrote this thesis comparatively, comparing pedagogy versus andragogy. Okay, follow me? So I carry this on my iPhone as a PDF. Why the hell should you care? Well, it's my feeling that the education reform conversation has really been a teacher witch hunt. I think the last couple years in the media, a lot of teachers and really well-intended folks have gotten their asses handed to them over this whole education reform debate, right? I don't think it's a teacher, a teacher issue. I think we have a product issue, and I'm a product guy. I always start with the end user and work my way backwards in order to reconcile what the business opportunity is. So if we all agree, this is our end user, right? The student. Agreed? Yes. Affirmative. So why is it that the product feels like black and white TV, right? The product being the pedagogy. I'm not talking about technology, folks. I'm talking about analog product, OK? Product, product, product. What they want for is the sex appeal. They want for it to be productized. They want their education to, to kind of get them as excited as, let's say, Nike gets them excited, right? They won't just do it, but instead of the swoosh, we give them the ETS. Okay? Just test it. Okay? So the product issue is fundamentally an issue of pedagogy. Now, let me, let me break this down into the parts. It wouldn't be an issue if the definition wasn't a little bit perverted. Definition is the art or profession of teaching. All of K through 12, the ecosystem of education, the books, the tests, how you guys, many folks here, were taught to be teachers, were taught in the principles of pedagogy, right? Pedagogy. At the root, at the core of the product, is hollow. Pedo means child. Agog, follow me, means to cognate with, thus, to lead the child. And this is where we have the breakdown, right? This is where we have that product breakdown. John Amos Comenius. Do you guys know who this guy is? He was the godfather of pedagogy. Apprentices learn to forge by forging, to paint by painting, and to dance by dancing. In schools, therefore, let the students learn to write by writing. Yes. To talk by talking, and to reason Amen. by reasoning. Amen, Comenius. Right? But you get the feeling he is twisting in his grave with a big WTF. Because there ain't X, because I'm not going to curse, because we're going to use this audio, all right, that has to do with pedagogy. This sounds like andragogy, self-directed, self-centered learning, realization, internally motivated, OK? Not the ETS, not pedagogy, OK? Yes, the ETS, I'm sorry. Someone's got to say it. 20 million tests a year in the U.S. and 180 other countries is managed by the Educational Testing Services, a not-for-profit. I'm going to say the M word, okay? There, I did it. All right? Then we've got this whole thing called the Carnegie Unit. I'm in the product business, right? I sell sweatshirts. The Carnegie Unit sells the student hour, right? What's the student hour? It's a.k.a. seat time. Right? There's this formula, 120 hours a year, gives you credits. I mean, Andrew Carnegie is spinning in his grave. Okay, because he didn't mean for this to be, like in 1906 when this all came to be, he didn't mean for this to be the outcome. The product, hollowed, being hollowed at its core. Okay? Pedagogy versus andragogy. The learner based on pedagogy. The learner depends upon the instructor for all learning. The teacher, the instructor, assumes full responsibility for what is taught and how it is learned. The teacher-instructor evaluates the learning. Okay, we, we've learned to accept this. This is pedagogy. The teacher in front of the class, chalkboard, kids lined up. Andragogy, adult learning. The learner is self-directed. The learner is responsible for his or her own learning. Self-evaluation is characteristic of this approach. This is adult-centered learning, right? This is what we learn. That's why I carry this little PDF with me. Here's one for you. Here's the d a stinger. Motivation for learning. Pedagogy, a child learning motivation, primarily motivated by external pressures. Tai Chi, right? 
uh, competition for grades and the consequences of failure. Okay, this is pedagogy, andragogy, adult learning. Internally motivated, self-esteem, recognition, better quality of life, self-confidence, self-actualization, like survival in the woods. You just figure that, you, you figure out how to light a fire because you needed to light the damn fire. That's andragogy, right? It's kind of like riding a bike. Kids, kids, they understand andragogy. Like this video, we all had epic fails. Riding a bike, this kid gets what do you have any words of wisdom? Right. What about for all the other kids trying to learn how to ride their bike? Can you say anything to them? Thumbs up. Thumbs up, everybody! All right. For rock and roll! <laughs> andragogy. Sounds like andragogy to me. Does that sound like child led learning? No! Pedagogy and the educational bubble. We thought Bear and Lehman's, we thought the real estate bubble was bad. This is the bubble, folks. So, what do I do about it? Well, I'm very proud. Not that I've got all the solutions, because I don't. And there's a lot of great programs and products out in this room and within this community at the 140 EDU community. But Sweat Equity Education, we've actually cracked something that we call Lego Goji. Okay? And because I only get 10 minutes, I can't break it all down for you right now, but it's good. <laughs> you can follow. Uh, Sweat Equity at Sweat Equity, or go to Sweat Equity Education, learn about it. It's a 501c3 that I helped find, uh, found it. I'm, on the, I'm the chairman of the board about seven, eight years ago. I'm very, very proud of the work that these folks have done. So dissing. I started thinking about this diss thing. I thought, started thinking about what gift can I bestow on the 140 community? Hmm. If you start to think about all the diss words that happen in school, disempower, disengage, disaffirm, uh, disgruntle. There's a lot of dissing happening in schools, don't you think? So my gift to the 140 EDU community for all of us to use is a new platform called StopDissing.me. Okay, this is real, folks. Okay, what you can do, it's kind of like, I like to think of it as kind of like our TED, you know, like taking the piss a little bit, ideas worth spreading. Uh, you go to facebook.com forward slash stop dissing me, okay? And at stop dissing me, you could call on educators or formers. It's basically a reporting mechanism, articles, events, use the hashtags of today in school, hashtag stop dissing me, and there will be a feed and we will administer and uh, hopefully you guys will use it. Uh, so it's at stop dissing me and you could use those two hashtags on the screen. Uh, stop dissing me and uh, today in school and hopefully we get this conversation not just a conversation from one adult to another adult but hopefully we can engender a conversation from kids to adults as well and have our Arab Spring in education reform thank you guys thank you for having me I look forward to seeing you next time big up 140 Jeff all that you guys do man much love thank you, thank you.